Hello, welcome back to Throwing the Tower Podcast. I'm your host, Chuck's Payne. Uh, again, it's going to be me, just me here, so I'm going to do it my way. See, let's just get this thing rolling. Um, this is not one of my um, amateur analyst segments. This is kind of a new mini series I'm starting. So what basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be breaking down each um, team by division and looking at their salary cap space, uh, free agents and everything like that. And I'll tell you who I who who I think they should sign as. And this is just only for the quarterback position. So who I think they should sign as well as who I think that they will actually end up who, who I think will actually end up being each team's quarterback come the start of the 2023 season. So without further ado, let's let's jump jump right in. Oh, and also, by the way, I'm eating jelly beans. Uh, I, I know some of y'all are gonna be like, "Oh, it's candy, candy." I just came from working out, so shit. This is this is this is a uh, this is a celebratory thing for me. So I'm <laughs> I'm gonna eat some jelly beans, okay? But like, yeah, let's just start with the excuse me. Let's just start with the Dallas Cowboys, okay? Now I know y'all. I know y'all have heard my rants, and despite what Stu says. I am a Cowboys fan. I'm also a Mavs fan. I'm just more objective than to some other folks that are Cowboys and Mavs, Mavs fan, fans. So, with that being said, I do think um, the Cowboys will end up bringing that back Dak Prescott this uh, this coming off off season. Um, they only have about 6.7 million in salary cap space, so. That's right now, barring that. Um, so I think what's going to happen in the offseason for the Cowboys is that we're going to end up just trying to sign all our free agents that are that are, um, you know, that that are uh, needing new deals. The biggest ones in particular: Tony Pollard, Don Schultz, Cooper Rush, um, Terrence Steele. Um, all those guys we're going to try to probably possibly resign. So, but the bulk of our salary cap mon- money is going to be used to resign those players. So, I think as far as the quarterback position goes, we we may sign Cooper Rush as the backup again, but as far as our starter, I think I think that at this point in time, it will be Dak Prescott and personally I think it should be Dak Prescott unless unless a new Unless a dark horse new candidate uh, comes out and says that they're that they're open to coming to the ca- to the Cowboys, i.e., Lamar Jackson or Aaron Rodgers, because I know the if you look at the see another issue is that if you look at the um, quarterbacks in the league right now, there's not a lot of good quarterbacks. And honestly, I gotta say, as much as I rag on Dak, Dak, um, there's not a lot of quarterbacks that are at Dak's level. So. So that so that's something to take a look out look out for. Um, as far as like Derek Carr, Derek Carr is probably the best quarterback available right now, um, and I honestly think Dak is maybe a little bit better than him. But either way, they're still on the same tier. So I think if I just don't think it's wise to get a Derek Carr when you have it. It's not really upgrade. If anything, it's just a lateral move. I think it's actually a little bit a smart slight downgrade if we do end up with Derek Carr. But um. Yeah, as far as far as um, as are the Cowboys, I think Dak will be the guy. I think he'll be the guy. I think he'll be. They'll give him at least one more try, and I think their hopes are set high for next year. Well, our hopes are set high for next year, and I truly think that the the organization or the leaders of the organization, i.e., Jerry Jones and his family, I do do think that they are pursuing a championship next year and if Dak doesn't at least at the very least if Dak and the Cowboys don't at the very least um go to the uh NFC championship I do think I think it's done for I think they're gonna get rid of Dak I think they're gonna get rid of the coach I think they're gonna just clean house and kind of I don't I don't know see I don't know if they're gonna start over because Jerry Jones is about 80 something and he does not want to waste years on the rebuild he wants to win another championship before he leaves this earth. So there's no way they're going to do a rebuild. Um, they're probably going to end up trying to get grow after a guy who may be disgruntled in his situation, i.e. Um, maybe like a, I don't know, just Lamar Jackson or somebody. They're going to try to trade for somebody or try to get someone 
who is um maybe an older player that's that's coming in and out of his prime and is having some difficulties with his team. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head right now other than Aaron Aaron Rodgers. Um and now and I don't know if he'll be playing next year, but um I'm tr- I'm trying to think really if if there's any quarterback like kind of old older quarterback that's on his way out that could possibly we could possibly you know use uh, bring in to win to help win us a championship and I don't think there's not I know people people are not gonna say it, but I'm gonna say it there's not a lot of good quarterbacks in the league right now it's just not and. <laughs> I'm I'm literally going down the list right now and I'm like bro there's no good quarterbacks in the league like or there's no there's not a lot of good quarterbacks in the league. I see Patrick Mahomes is on his own level. You got Josh Allen, um Joe Burrow. I actually think Joe Burrow is better than Josh Allen, but that's a different topic for a different day. Um Yeah, I mean <laughs> and the thing about it is the ones that are are, are good and talented their teams, there's no way in hell they're gonna let that their their uh, their star star quarterback leave their team. If if Josh Allen left the Bills, the Bills would be a um, four or five win team every year, back to what they used to be. If um if ju- Char- if Justin Herbert leaves the Chargers, Chargers wouldn't be. I think Chargers will be in the number one or two overall pick. Cause it's just you just need a quarterback in this day and age. One person I, I I do I am keeping an eye on, eye on as far as the next quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, and I know this is a wild accusation, but I'm telling you because I used to play college football. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> I used to play high school football, and I played. We played against. You might know him. He's a very small guy, but a very dynamic guy. His name is Kyler Murray, and he was. And when I when we played against him, we was like this nigga is going to the league. Like, like it was so apparent. Like, he's he's going somewhere. He's going whether it be baseball, football, hell, basketball. He's going somewhere. He's going to be playing in the in professionally somewhere. So, I think <laughs> if this Dax situation does not work out next year, I really think we should start looking at possibly getting Kyler Murray because I think Kyler. I don't know a lot of people have like their their issues with Kyler Murray, but I do think he's a very dynamic player. I do think he's um. A little bit better of a passer than Lamar Jackson at this point. Um, I also think that he's a, a lot of the times misunderstood, and I do think he does a lot of childish stuff that is um, evident. And as far as as far as his age, he he kind of acts his age or even lower than that sometimes. But he is from Dallas. Um, he went to Allen High School. It's just 15, 20 minutes away from where I'm. From the, well, actually, it's pretty far, but it's still, it's still considered Dallas. Um, yeah, so he's 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 um, he, he I feel like he would be a good addition if we were, were to look look for someone to replace Dak, either him or Lamar Jackson or someone someone of, of these sorts. Because I do think like the Cardinals are kind of getting tired of Kyle Murray, and and I know he just signed a contract, but that whole fiasco with the the, you gotta watch a certain amount, or, a certain amount of hours of film. I don't think that went well with the public image of Kyler Murray and also the team. They just fired their head coach too, so I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. I told them. I said it back then. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking hiring Cliff Kingsbury as their head coach, who was just became the uh, I believe either the offensive coordinator or the head coach at USC, and just backed out of it. This is the guy you want to be your head coach. The guy, uh, it just bothers me, bro. Because it, the, I was, I, I'm gonna tell you this. The reason it bothers me is because before I do this, let me let me get something. Let me make sure something. Uh, give me one second. Let me get back to the topic where I was talking about coaches. The reason it bo- that type of shit bothers me is because. There's a lot of coaches, and I'm not just talking about, I know people like to, I'm not just talking about black coaches, I'm talking about, there is a lot of coaches in the league who are dying for that position, and they've been in the league for years, I'm talking about years, like 30 years, and 
it's just like a slap in the face, you know, slap in the face. You you hire a guy who's a Texas Tech head coach who Texas Tech wasn't wasn't good at all. The only reason they even won games is because they had Patrick Mahomes. So he was a Texas Tech head coach. Um, he 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 sucks at as the head coach, but because he he's young and looks good, um, and he and he's he's like an offensive type of coach. Uh, he gets another job as. Uh, let me let me look this up because I do believe it was um I do believe it was an offensive coordinator job, but give me one second here. Yeah, he was he was he he got hired as the USC offensive coordinator, not even the head coach, just the offensive coordinator for USC. Okay, guys, I'm back. Well, also one thing I do not recommend. Using your phone to record, <laughs> it's just too much shit. Like every time I, every time I make a video or something like that, it's always something. It's always something that stops the video. It's so fucking annoying. But um, I was talking about uh Cliff Kingsbury getting that job, and I just think it was ridiculous. I think sometimes I know they say, oh, you shouldn't listen to the fans, this and that, and this and that. But or you, if you listen to fans, you become a fan. But um, shit. You don't listen to fans, and, and you're. I really see it's not my issue. Is just um, when when people when these teams do that and they don't acknowledge that it was a mistake, they just keep moving on. Even though we said it was going to be a mistake when it first happened, and it ended up becoming a mistake, and you just just keep going. That's just um, that's just says something about the ownership and just the organization over all over there and how trash. It is, you know, it's crazy. It's, it's it's funny when whenever you look at think about stuff, how certain teams are just always bad, just always t trash teams, always sorry, and there's a reason for it. <laughs> if you look at their ownership and and what they're doing, like you can clearly tell, oh, this yeah, this is a trash trash run team, just a trash run team, and so I think that was a mistake. But um, let's get back to the NFC, NFC East here. Um, I'm going to talk about the Washington Commanders next. Um, so as far as uh, as far as the Commanders, um, so they should, I think they know what they're going to do is um, they're going to put Sam Howell as their starting quarterback. Uh, Ron Rivera already said it. Um, and I think that's a smart move because I think that's what they should do because they have a lot of salary cap. I was going to put Derek Carr in this situation. However, they have a lot of free agents that they need to sign in the defensive end of the ball, defensive side of the ball. Um, so I think they should just go ahead and do that first and then leave Sam Howell on his rookie contract and see if you can try to load up your team everywhere, everywhere around your team as much as possible so that if Sam Howell is just a decent to good quarterback, you have a chance to, you know, make a run or something like that. Um, but they have, they have a, they, they don't have a bad team. Like, I'm, before the season, everyone was like, "Oh, NFC East is gonna suck. This is gonna be trash. It's gonna be trash." Almost all the teams almost made the playoffs. NFC East was probably it was by far the hardest division. Uh, one Cowboys made the playoffs. Giants made the playoffs. Redskins were this close to making the playoffs. Eagles made the Super Bowl. Okay, so so NFC East is gonna be a tough, tough um, division next year. They're just gonna each all battle it out and everything like that. So, I do think the Commanders will be dead last, though. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> They're gonna be trash. They're gonna be awful. Commanders, and, and um, yeah, I think they'll be trash. But, you know, that I, I still think that's good for Sam Howard. I still think it's good to play him because he's, he, this is only his second year. He's, he's a young quarterback. He can, if he goes through those trials and tribulations, I'm always for. Me personally, I'm always for playing the quarterback unless you know for sure he needs some improvement. But if you draft a quarterback, I don't understand why you won't play him. I, I don't because especially if you draft him. See, Sam Howell is even different because he's, he, he's, uh, he's in the fifth round. He was drafted in the fifth round. Quarterback from the fifth round. He went to North Carolina um, about 6-1. Yeah, he, dra he was drafted in the fifth round. But if you draft a quarterback in the first two rounds, I think you should you need like – just you need to play him, I, like if you because that first two rounds to me, first two rounds is starters. If you don't you, I need to be, make sure that the two people I'm drafting or the people I'm drafting the first and second round are going to be starters quickly. 
I mean about a year or two. They need to be stars quickly. Because I think it's just a waste of a draft pick if not. Unless you're going to develop this quarterback and he's going to end up being whatever. Like Jalen Hurts was a second round pick. And he was forced to play like a couple of games his rookie season. And then he played a whole year after that. And then um, this year they, 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 they decided to leave him. No, he, yeah, this year they decided to leave him as, as the qu- quarterback. And he look where he took him. I don't think it takes that long to develop anyone. Like all these people like to say, it's, it's it needs he needs some time to develop. And this thing, he's like, what is he not? What is he gonna learn that he not doesn't already know or or hasn't already picked up? But as far as the Commanders, yeah, I think that's what they're gonna do at the quarterback position. I think it's a smart move. Uh, save as much cap space as possible until you um, uh, yeah, until you uh. You know, uh, save as much cap space as po- possible. Just save as much cap space as possible. Um, okay, let's go to let's go to the. I ain't going to that team. Let's go to the New York Giants. Okay, this is a great year for the New York Giants. I know all you New York Giants fans are all happy and shit, but what, what, is this the first time the Giants? When was the last time the Giants went to the uh, went to the to the um, Playoffs. It was like it got the sixties, seventies. Um, I don't know. I don't know. The Giants have been ass, trash. But uh, <laughs> but okay. So let me, let me be fair. Uh, Giants were actually did have a good season. Um, they uh, Brian Dayball is an excellent coach, excellent coach. It, it, and it's showing you up because the minute he loses the Bills, Josh Allen starts getting erratic. The, the minute he gets on the Giants, Dalen Jones starts looking kind of like a, a better or franchise quarterback, which I I still don't think he is. But Brian Dayball made him look like that. So imagine if Brian Dayball actually had a franchise quarterback. So that's what's scary to me. So in this situation, I'm gonna have three different scenarios: who they, who I think they're gonna do, who I think they're gonna be, have this quarterback, who I think they should, and who I want. Okay. As far as who I think they're going to have as quarterback, I think they're gonna work out some situation with Daniel Jones as far as uh re-signing him to. And it's not gonna be max money. It's gonna be maybe like a mid-tier contract, it's, and maybe it's gonna only be like two years. Um. So yeah, may, and he's made maybe two years, fifty million. It's gonna be something small and minimal, because Daniel Jones hasn't proven shit. And to me, just me personally, I think he's an awful quarterback. I think no, not awful, but I think he's not good. I think he's in the bottom fifteen as far as quarterback. I think I think um, he could, at times he can play above average. He's a lot more athletic than you would think. Like he's a lot faster than uh, faster and quicker than you would think. He's a big quarterback. He has a decent arm, um, but he just—I don't know—he just makes too many bad decisions. And one thing about I—I I, I know about um, franchise quarterbacks is I, one of the big measures for me as far as a franchise quarterback is how well you do under pressure. And what I mean by pressure, I mean blitz, blitzes, or when you're facing a great D line. If you are trash under press pressure or your fate or whatever, and you have it's it's seen, we can actually see it. I, I don't think that's a franchise quarterback. I think a franchise quarterback should be able to lift a team, a trash team on 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 their own because that's how much money they're being paid. But with with that being said, I think the Giants. I do think the Giants will still keep Daniel Jones as their quarterback just now for now, just because. There's not really too many great options as far as quit. Um, what I think they should do, however, I really do think they should um, look into the Derek Carr situation because they have a lot of cap space, almost $58 million. And um, I think they could keep safe. They're, going, they're definitely going to keep Saquon Barkley. They're, gonna, they're probably going to get um, keep some of the, these defensive guys as well. Um but I think, uh, as far as anyone else, they don't they don't really need have too many people that need to be resigned. Um, maybe uh, Darius Slayton, they probably m- might look at resigning him as well. Um, but but yeah, they they are um they and they had a really good defense. 
this past year. They had a really good defense, and and so I think they're going to bring out bring back some of their players, uh, defensive players. And I think so. As far as the Derek Carr situation, it's as far as it's going to take about thirty four million in cap space to sign Derek Carr because he's going to come with his signing bonus, and then he's going to come with the, his uh, um, salary cap hit and everything like that. Um, give me one second here. Yeah, salary bonus, salary workout bonus. So it's about going to come to around thirty-four million, almost thirty-five million. I think, as far as the Giants having fifty-eight million in cap space, I think they can do that deal as well as re-sign Saquon Barkley. However, they're going to have to make really make sure that it's a fit with Derek Carr and that Derek Carr would be able to to immensely move up their chances of. of um, com- competing for a Super Bowl, and because that defense is Super Bowl worthy, but I don't, I think I do think they they still will end up with just de- signing Daniel Jones. Me, what I think, what I want, what I what I'm praying, I'm praying they stick with Daniel Jones. I'm that's what I'm praying as a Cowboys fan. I'm praying they stick with Daniel Jones so we can beat their ass every year. I love when we play the Giants. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I love when we play the Giants. That shit is fun as fuck. And we pick it up. I love that shit. <laughs> so, he played better this year, but I'm not afraid of no Daniel Jones, bro. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not afraid of that. Daniel Jones is, when he plays his best football, he's a slightly above average quarterback. So, and he's probably the second worst quarterback in the league. May, I mean, not, I'm sorry, not in the league, in the division. Maybe the worst depending on how Sam Howell plays but we'll see but that's what I think is going to happen with the Giants I think they're going to um, re-sign uh, Daniel Jones for like a one two year contract just to see just because they're they're going to try to um, you know try to put him on like a t- like maybe they mean franchise tag him just try to put him on some type of like okay you got to prove it to us sort of thing and if he doesn't do that then they're, they're, they're um, going to part ways with him but which, if they do, is going to be one of those situations where, where a lot of fans and people are like, why did you draft him so high? Even analysts were like, he, he was like a second round. If anything, high seed probably went, went was second round. Why did you draft him so high? And so, it's going to be one of those things where I just think whoever drafted him, I think, I don't know if he was already fired, but he needs to lose his job, especially if, if they they get rid of him. Um, So, for last but not least... I got to talk about them because, you know, they made the uh, Super Bowl or whatever. Philadelphia Eagles. It's not a lot to say here. <laughs> it's not a lot to say here, bro. They're just going to keep um, Jalen Hurts. That's who, like it's not it's that it's not even a question. This is Jalen Hurts is probably a top five quarterback right now. He's I love Jalen Hurts personally. I hate the Eagles, but I love him personally. And he is the epitome. I don't know if that's a word, but he literally is the epitome of a leader of what everyone wants to have as they're at the quarterback position on their team. Does he have his limitations? He does. Just like most quarterbacks does. Um, but it's just something about him. He has that it fact. It's something about him where it's just like, I don't know, like, no matter how many people question him, you know, he's still going to find some way to get the job done. He's, he, and what's, what's funny to me is that, not even funny, but what's, it's, it's weird to me. I could tell who does the work and who actually doesn't. Because if you're actually doing the work, you will, you'll progressively improve. That's how, that's how it works. If you stay the same your whole career, you're not, you're not working on what you need to work on. And you can, Visibly tell players like him and Lamar Jackson have gotten immensely better at passing the football. Like, and and part of the thing too is I think he was a little bit underrated coming out of college. Um, I'm not gonna speak on that too much because that's my. I'm gonna say that for another um, another video I do. But it's certain it's certain type of players that every time they come out of college, it's we're talking about a situation like this. But J- Jalen Hurts, as let's get back to what we're talking about. Jalen Hurts is a probably a top five 
definitely top 10 quarterback. So there, <laughs> I think they will keep him. I think they should keep him, and I want them to keep him. No, no, no. I, I want them to trade him. In fact, trade him, trade him to us. Let's do a swap, a quarterback swap. You get Dak Prescott, we'll get him. That's what I want, but he's... The Philadelphia are not going to do that. <laughs> so they, let me just say, they have $11.5 million in cap space. Um, I think most of that is going to be... Is going to be try getting CJ Gardner Johnson resigned because he he was a he he was a beast this year, bro. He and, and you know I've been knowing CJ Gardner Johnson since the Saints, and every time I watch the Saints play, I, I was always I was always like, who the fuck is that? This nigga is coming down and booming people and and knocking shit out. I'm like, who who is that? So I'm finally glad that he's getting his his um. His shine that he deserves because he's been a really good player for a, a long, a, a long time. Um, I don't know if they they have a lot of free agents on the defensive side though. Um, Robert Quinn, who has Fletcher Cox, J- Javon Hargraves, James Bradbury, uh, Dom Kinsler, Linval Joseph. I think Boston Scott is the running back. Um, Miles Sanders. So I, I think the real, the real. Um, and then Gardner Mitchell, they're going to need to find a backup. Like I said, they're, I feel like every team should have at least two serviceable back, serviceable back, serviceable backups. I don't know what the backup for the Giants is. I'm not going to lie to you, but I think every team should have two serviceable backups. Um, and I know Gardner Minshew is is a free agent uh, this in this new free agency, so I don't know if they'll resign him. But I think they're going to use most of their cap space tr- trying to get some of these defensive guys signed. They maybe might draft the quarterback. I don't know, but yeah, they're, they're going to use most of their uh, salary cap to try to um, get these defensive guys signed. So that's what it, that's what it's going to be. Uh, I think the Eagles will be fine as far as the outtake on the, the division. Eagles are clearly the favorite. Um, Eagles are clearly the favorite. I think Commanders will be probably predicted to be dead last however i do think if the giant giants can give them a run for their money if daniel jones goes back to being daniel jones um because a lot of these games that they're winning i mean they're like really close games and they just had a lot of it was based on luck. giants are always so fucking lucky like that i just know that with certain teams this always get lucky on some crazy ass shit that happens but yeah, Giants are that one of those teams. The fucking helmet catches. Like, it's just fucking luck all the time. But uh, as far as they, yeah, so it's either Redskins or Giants will be last. I think Redskins will probably end up being last. Um, Cowboys and Eagles are going to compete for a first in division, I believe. But I do think it's not going to be too much of a competition, especially if Eagles get a lot of their defensive players signed. Um, I don't, I don't think it'll be too much conversation, uh, competition because the Cowboys have. I unless Cowboys have some alarming issues that they need to address for them to even compete for a championship. They don't and they need they need to resign a lot of players as well. They they don't have they need they need I've been saying this for years. This is a tangent. I've been saying this for years. They they need to address their cornerback position. They just need to. They they have one solid quarterback that's Trayvon Diggs on the other side. He's a pro bowler. Whoever's playing that backside corner, the, the second secondary corner, is ass. Antonio Brown, I mean, sorry, Anthony Brown. I don't have anything against him, but he's not getting the job done. He's been terrible for a couple years now. And I'm just, it's just funny because now I feel like they finally realized that this year, but I don't think he's coming back. Um, even Kelvin Joseph, I think it was Kelvin Joseph number one, the backup. He was getting he was getting his ass cooked. I forgot what game, but he was getting his ass cooked every time they put him in there. I I do like the the prospects of um Deron Bland. I think he's someone that you could possibly put in the set, on that sec on the outside, and then when Jordan Lewis comes back, we can uh, leave Jordan Lewis as the slot corner. Um, also, I like uh, this the guy named Mukul Mukuma or Mukuma. Um, I really think he's gonna be a really good player. I think he he should probably get more time, start um, more snaps at the safety position. 
um i think he'll be a really good player because especially if if he he can possibly replace donovan wilson if we don't re-sign him but um that's also on the tangent um i do think the eagles will end up being the winners of this division though just because they, they just they just have the better the best team and they have the, be- the better quarterbacks better quarterback so that's all that's all for the nfc east today um Watch out on my next segment. I'll probably do the NFC North my next segment. Either in the NFC North or the NFC West. West. Um, but it's not going to be too much uh, differences in the NFC East as far as quarterbacks. Um, there will be a different starter for Redskins. I mean, shit. The Commanders, I'm sorry. Um, and then the uh, the Commanders and then the uh, possibly the Giants. I do think Giants will still end up being with, their same, with the same quarterback, Daniel Jones. But... Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But thank y'all for tuning in. Throwing the Towel Podcast. Please like, share, and subscribe. You know, you know where to find us at. Throwing the Towel 214 on, and on Instagram. Throwing the Towel 214 at gmail.com and TITTP at, on Twitter. We, we will be starting a um, TikTok. So please, all you TikTokers, follow us on TikTok. Peace.